What's going on everyone? In this video, I'll be talking on the five best SAT tricks and tips that you can use to get 1600 on the SAT in 2022. Now, the way this video is going to be breaking down, broken down, first, I'm going to be going over three SAT reading tips and then finish off with two amazing SAT math trips that will help you increase your score in both sections. Now, with these tricks, obviously, you must practice them, you must rehearse them, you must continuously do them because if you do not, and if you do not implement them in your study routine when you practice and on the actual exam, then at this point, it's just words flowing through your ear. You have to make sure you actually apply what I'm telling you guys in this video. So the first trick is annotation. This applies to the ST reading comprehension session, section specifically, but it can also be applied to the ST writing section. Now, why should we be annotating at all? Well, in the comprehension section, if you constantly uh, create connections as you are reading, then your brain will be programmed to understand the material much better. Now, for example, let's say you read paragraph one, and you want to write maybe a quick one or two sentences, maybe even not even full sentences, not even full proper English, but just one or two quick notes that summarize that uh, paragraph. And then most of the times uh, you will get questions on the ST reading uh, section that you just read about like, what does this paragraph, um, what is this paragraph trying to say? What is the main idea of paragraph two? What is the connection between paragraph three and paragraph four? If you're able to understand every single paragraph, you can quickly pull out information from the text without spending too much time rereading every single thing. Because the point of annotations is you basically make the text, which is like five paragraphs long, make it to one paragraph full of annotations. That's it, right? You're essentially shortening the reading by highlighting the main points per paragraph and the passage in general. And this goes a long way for understanding material much faster for the SAT reading section. And personally, I think this saved my SAT reading score because I used to get like 600s, like 610, 600. But after applying this trick and the uh, two, one, two other tricks I'll talk later, about later in this video, I got like a 740 on my after SAT, which, well, if you get a 740 on the reading section, considering math is way easier, you're basically gonna guarantee yourself like a 1500 plus, which guarantees yourself a scholarship to most colleges and it guarantees yourself a competitive spot against uh, other students when it comes to top colleges like Harvard or Stanford. Although I still did get rejected from Stanford. So. So a little salty. My second tip is to read the questions first before reading the actual passage. Now, why do you want to read the ST reading questions first read the passage before actually reading the passage itself? Well, what's the point of reading the passage if you don't know what you're looking for? Let's say you have to go on a treasure hunt, right? But you do not know what treasure you're looking for. At that point, you're just gonna be looking at every single thing and that there's no, there's no reason you are doing a treasure hunt if you do have no idea what treasure you're looking for. It's the same thing applies to this. Why read the passage if you don't know what questions, what answers you're looking for? So that's why I read the questions first. And let's say you read um, all the questions, highlight all the vocabulary questions, like the questions that are like, what does this word mean in line 69? Then you want to go line 69, underline the word. So when you read the passage for the first time and you come across the word, you can answer the question uh, right there and then. You don't have to go back later on, read the, the previous sentence, that sentence and the succeeding sentence to understand what the word means because once you read it the first time, you're like, oh, I don't exactly what the word means. Let me ask the question right now. Because it would really suck if you do not read the questions first and then you read the question that says, what does the, this word mean on line 69? And you're like, dang, now if we go back, flip a couple of pages back, um, read like, you know, the, the text around it all over again. And what's the point of rereading text you just read? Do you really like reading that much? I know you don't, right? So let's minimize the amount of reading you have to do. And this is like the whole focal point of the ST reading comprehension section. This is what separates top 99% scores and like the bottom 50, right? It's the ability to read the text only once, maybe like twice. Um, when I say twice, I mean like short snippets because you forgot something, right? If you're able to comprehend everything the first go, or at least like 90% of things first go, you're guaranteeing yourself like at least a, a nine out of 11 on every single question set for every single passage, which translates to, I think, uh, oh, like 10 questions wrong. Right, which is actually still a lot. Not a lot, but it's um, you won't get like a 750 like that. So let's say you're able to get 10 out of 11 on some, maybe 9 out of 11, maybe 11 out of 11 on some. Then you're looking at maybe only like four or five wrong, which is easily a 700 plus range. Like I said, that's what, you're, that's what you want to shoot for. You want to shoot for that 700 plus, maybe even 800 if you're ambitious, because if you shoot for 800, if you miss, you at least get like a 760. And there's no way you're going to be upset with the 760 because Trust me, 1600 does not mean as much as you think it does. I mean, it does mean a lot, but uh, when it comes to Harvard and them, 1600 is like, eh, everyone gets those. Now my third trick for the ST reading section is, just give up, it's like, nah, uh, you want to read the passages in sequential order. 
right? Now, the reason you want to read the passage in sequential order is because I know some students, uh, when they do Khan Academy, they notice that, hey, you know what? I'm pretty good at ST science passages and I suck at ST history. That was me. Maybe I should just flip to the ST science passages first, finish them, and go to the ST history passages. Well, the thing is, you could do that. In fact, that is a viable method. But personally, I don't want you guys spending too much time trying to figure out which passage you should do first, right? You don't want to waste time on the ST reading section at all. And if you're trying to flip through passages, trying to see which one's easier, which one has um, the easier questions, then you're just wasting time. And what if you're stuck between two passages? How are you going to decide? Flip a coin? Well, you can't have a coin on in the test center. So you're just gonna have to do any, mini, mini, mo and pick one. That just wastes time. So just go with sequential order, right? If you practice enough for every single passage type, then honestly, the order does not matter. You're gonna suck the passages you suck at, you're gonna be good at the passages you're good at. And that's just how it's gonna work. So you just wanna flow like that. So please just do the entire SD reading section in sequential order and call it a day. Now my fourth tip, and this is a math tip, you can now transition to math. That is polynomial factorization, all right? This is like an awesome more of a subject. But the tricks involved in this include understanding the roots of a polynomial, right? What does a root mean? How does a root like look like in an equation? Like if I give the equation x minus three times x minus two times x minus one, what are the roots of the equation? Well, it's three, two, one, because plug in three, the entire thing becomes zero. You plug in two, the entire thing becomes zero. You plug in one, the entire thing becomes zero, right? This is polynomial like factorization tricks. So like how to factor polynomial, uh, the, diamond, the diamond method, um, understand negative b over a is some solutions, c over a is a product of solutions. Uh, anything revolving around polynomials, you guys must know. Okay, um, understanding this entire subject, this entire topic will take you really far in the ST math session. So, in the tricks I just said out loud, write them down. Okay, don't just think, oh, those were some nice letters and numbers. He said, no, write them down. And you, if you do that, you just learn three or four tricks right now. And you switch up the topic polynomial factorization and like some ST tricks revolving around it, you're gonna be pretty set for that session. And if you want all the ST math tricks possible, then just check out my ST math course, link in the description below. And now my fifth tip is to understand circle manipulation. Now, uh, what is circle manipulation and what do I mean by circles, right? Well, actually, if you do not know what I mean by circles, then you're, you're I don't think the ST is a good example for you. But circle manipulation is understanding how the equation of a circle works, how to do, um, uh, the perfect square, how to find the perfect square, right? How to uh, take a equation and put it into vertex form because you're gonna need to know how to do that to uh, derive the equation of a circle, right? Um, also know how to find the center of a circle, which is where you add the two X coordinates of the, the ends of a circle and divide by two, and then uh, add up the two Y coordinates at the uh, each end of the circle and divide by two. And these ends are the diameter of the circle, right? So understand that, understand what R squared is or what it represents, which is nothing. Also know what R represents, which is radius. D represents, which is diameter, which is two R, two times radius, right? Understand uh, how to find, what's the center of a circle look like when you're given a circle equation, right? That stuff you have to understand, okay? And like I said, the way you wanna find these tricks and stuff is one, watch my YouTube videos. I can do cover a lot of tricks there, but two, watch my course as well. I cover every, literally every single thing you need to know for the ST math section there as well. So either way, there's no reason that you guys do not understand polynomial factorization or circle manipulation by the time you take the SAT. And if you listen to what I say, then you will be pretty set when you arrive to the SAT and you take, sit down and you know do the math section, reading section. And if you follow these five tips, you're looking at a pretty high SAT score. So you should be proud of yourself. Hopefully you guys get the score you want to get. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to check out the course in the description below. Use code FIRST100 for 25% off discount. Thank you all for watching. Peace.